Hello, my name is Brianna, and I'm coming with you, to you with the lower gastrointestinal uh, presentation of diverticulitis. So let's begin. What is diverticulitis? This is an uh, inflammation and infection of the bowel mucosa caused by bacteria, food, and fecal matter trapped in one or more diverticula. Okay, diverticulosis is having one or more diverticula in the colon without inflammation. So to better break that down, um, you, there is these outpouchings in the colon due to pressure building when you're pushing real hard when you got a past stool and it causes these outpouchings and food uh, bacteria can get trapped inside of that little back area and cause infection cause it to get inflamed and if if it's severe it can go to perforation so let's continue with that um, presentation not all clients who have diverticulosis develop diverticulitis. So diverticulosis is you just having any one or more of those um, outpouchings. Diverticulitis is when it's inflamed, one or all of them. Okay, diverticula is one. Okay, having one outpouching. Okay, diverticulum is more than one. Okay, diverticulum is um, one and diverticula is more than one. When either of those are inflamed, it becomes known as diverticulitis. Okay, so let's continue. Um, a little priority tip, remember to cleanse the bowel prior to surgery and diverticulitis. Uh, a bowel prep with neomycin is used when prescribed. So when you're doing NCLEX questions, you want to, uh, if there's a, a answer that's saying give the bowel, cleans the bowel, you want to go more towards that one because you have to understand what a GI is consisted of, bacteria, and it can go to sepsis really quick. So uh, we want to make sure we're going to we clean them out really good. Our next slide. So the findings to let you know if you have it or someone else has it, uh, there will be a, an acu acute onset of abdominal pain in the lower left uh, quadrant, usually in the sigmoid colon area, because that's where a lot of that pressure is um, being transferred to. So it's, it's right here in, on my left, on my left lower side. Okay, uh, nausea and vomiting. Okay. Um, it's, it can be it can be painful, especially when inflamed. You know, it, it's, it's it's causing trouble with uh, the bowel being able to empty, with it being af affected like that. So it can cause a slow elimination. This can cause some nausea, maybe some vomiting too. Fever. Anytime there is inflammation, you gotta know that there is a uh, fever associated with it. Fever is your body's uh, defense system to try to turn up the heat to. to like melt or evaporate the bacteria okay chills um, it's just uh, when you have the so the chills is caused by rapid relaxation and contraction of your muscles with inflammation it's like a like a, a pulsation going on so they can have a, a affection I mean effects of chills because of that tachycardia anytime there's infection understand that diverticulitis those pouchings are inflamed okay they're already at the bad part so increased heart rate due to the fact that your body's trying to get rush blood to the area that's filled with white blood cells to try to get rid of that infection so it's trying to you know get rid of it for you you know so you're going to have a rapid heart rate any kind anytime you have fever or inflammation your heart rate is going to be rapid Make that, put that in the back of your mind when you come to these questions. Um, abdominal distension, when there's inflammation, that muscle is not how it's, it's, it's not relaxed how it used to be. It's, it's, it's messed with. So it's a lot of blood being pulled to the area, trying to get rid of that uh, infection. So it's not going to be normal looking. It's going to be a little bit puffy. Just think about if you have a sore, it gets inflamed, it gets a little puffy. That's exactly what's happening inside of that colon there. So abdominal distension. Understand when we're doing our abdominal uh, uh, assessments, when we have distension, that's why we gotta want to look at why, you know, if they have distinctions or not, you know. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, labs that we could use uh, to help us 
target if this is it, diverticulitis or not. Our hematocrit and hemoglobins, it's going to be low. We're going to be bleeding internally at this point. Um, so that, that sac has ruptured open, so all of its content has seeped into the peritoneal cavity can call, lead to per, uh, peritonitis. And it's going to be very severe, okay? So, we look at our levels. Those labs are going to be down, all right? ESR is, is to detect for inflammation, and that's going to be increased. White blood cell, we already know. Anytime there's inflammation, um, increase in red, right, white blood cells, okay? Can it be a decrease in red blood cells because we're going to be bleeding out? But an increase in white blood cells because we're trying to get rid of the infection, Stools for occult blood can be positive, yeah, because we gotta think about where it's happening. It's in the uh, and close to the rectum. Some of that blood can, uh, instead of seeping out, can go backwards and be inside the poo. So uh, it can be po if pos possible to have uh, occult blood. A uh, barium enema. Um, this is to visualize. You know, it, it, it'll help us see if there is a if something is bursted open you know it's just give us a visualization of the colon you know better help us to see you know um, MRIs are used in all inflammatory bowel disorders contrast dyes are used now understand when you have contrast dye make sure that patient doesn't have a kidney problem because we need to be able to filter this out so I also watch for your allergy you know so our next slide Um, for severe manifestations, uh, you, there will be severe pain, high fever, and the client is usually hospitalized at this point. But some people don't get to it in time, and they can be experiencing this pain by themselves. So this is it's very good to uh, know about these disorders to help yourself and other people to be aware of these things. It can happen to anybody. Um, uh, we're gonna. We want nothing uh, by mouth. We having this. We need the bowel to be at rest. You you, you might uh, get it internal feedings, but we need your bowels at rest. Uh, receive nasal gastric suction. We want to just clear the bowels. We don't want anything in there that could further uh, participate. I mean, further damage or you know you know the words I'm looking for <laughs> to further. Increase the intensity of this infection, okay? Because there's the food that we eat contain bacteria too, okay? We gotta be mindful of those things. IV fluids. If the person's seeping out their content, you know what I'm saying? Um, they're not there. The just think about what the bowels do. They help absorb that water, and this is happening in mainly in the uh, colon, the large intestine. The large intestine is responsible for absorbing all, um, almost all of your water. So if that part is, is hurt or not able to function, woo, we need something to get in to get our fluids in because that's important. Uh, IV antibiotics, we're going to need that, okay? Any kind of inflammation, we need antibiotics fast, okay? We don't want to go to sepsis. Opioids, we need something for pain, okay? We, we, this stuff is going to hurt. This inflammation of our organs, okay? Uh, for mild cases, we want to instruct the client to take prescribed medications um, for pain, the infection, and the spasms, anti-spasmatics. We need that. Okay, we also want to educate the patients to promote normal bowel functions, no laxatives. We don't want to uh, put, put extra stress on the bowel. I know you might say, well, a laxative is going to, uh, well, we don't want you taking laxatives first of all because we've already having a problem with your fluid intake because your bowel is not able to absorb it like it should because it's injured and you're taking laxatives that's going to cause you to diarrhea, which is going to further deplete you of your fluids. This is not good for that alone and then two we don't want all that going on when your bowel is is, is open okay we, we're trying to get it to heal and you take it as laxity can seep all that poo out and go spread all into the peritoneal cavity you have to make a chain reaction when it comes to thinking as like a nurse with these conditions okay all right what we want to do we want to avoid seeds or indigestible materials such as nuts, popcorn, or seeds. When we say indigestible, it's it, it 
it's hard to digest really you know um you don't see popcorn seeds in your poo when you eat popcorn do you no it, it's just hard to get those passed and they can get stuck before it get passed okay and these can block those diverticulums and you gotta understand when those out pouching when it out pouches that mucosa layer still has a uh, bacteria normal flora in it but that normal bacteria can turn to bad bacteria for us any second any time so we don't want to risk that especially when that part of that bowel is weak all right avoid foods or drinks yes you want to avoid foods and drinks that can irritate the bowels avoid alcohol um just imagine pouring alcohol on your uh your scar when you get a boo-boo now imagine drinking alcohol and you got a boo-boo internally and it whew, i wonder we want to go back to the avoid the in uh, food that can block it well if it's blocked that pressure you know just it's just sitting there it got bacteria on it as well you know because we're dealing with poo in this area so that food have, have, have already came in contact with some bacteria that's probably stuck to it and if it gets stuck in that out pouching yeah are your chances of infection okay so we want to avoid those foods all right uh limit fat to 30 percent of daily calorie intake fat can cause diarrhea and we want well-formed stools okay okay consume a clear liquid diet until manifestation subsides i mean subside we don't want to re eat a normal diet we need our, our bowel to be at rest while it's healing so we're going to gradually go to the uh, normal food okay clear liquid diet Low fiber when in process of healing. Look, that's gonna that's gonna be on your test. <laughs> Low fiber while the bowel is healing. Then after it heals, you want to go to a high fiber diet. Okay. Um, so we're gonna read on progress to a low fiber diet once solid foods are tolerated without other manifestations. Slowly advance to a high fiber diet is tolerated when inflammation resolves. Okay. All right, so our medications that we're going to take to treat diverticulitis, we're going to take some antimicrobials, or of course, uh, we want to discontinue cyclophloxacin if you have tendon pain. Okay, monitor kidney function, um, decrease dose of antimicrobials if impaired. We don't, we don't want to become make it toxic for us. Okay, kidneys not able to filter out these drugs could be a problem. Okay, uh, this. Uh, antimicrobials can cause super infections so you want to watch for that thrush vaginal yeast infections these things are um, getting rid of your good bacteria in it as well so um, so as we stated you know the antimicrobial drugs they get they're treating the good bacteria that we have and the bad so depending on how long that we're on these uh, antibiotics or antimicrobials uh, can uh, tell us you know let us know how long um, I'm sorry depend on how long we're taking these antimicrobials can affect uh, the good uh, bacteria that we have as well and it can cause these super infections like those that thrush even though we're treating this it's getting it's messing with all the good bacteria that we have it's a broad spectrum so super infection is is possible okay urine can be dark expected and that's harmless so when someone complain well, know your side effects to different uh, antimicrobials or drugs and period because uh, in general because patients might say well my why my pee is why is my urine orange well if you're taking riff and pin um taking riff and pin for tb and you're uh urine turns orange and you say well, what's wrong no it's normal but if they didn't know that they can go probably lose their mind uh, so you can have that as well you want to monitor for central nervous system effects numbness of extremities ataxia seizures and notify provider immediately if present because um, this could 
this can lead to shock okay you got bacteria that has an open access like an open door to your peritoneal I mean yeah your peritoneal cavity and that area is sterile so when that gets inflamed a whole is lead to multiple organ failure here okay just think of that inflamed area so I mean squeezing those um, organs what what organs are wrapped inside of that membrane you got your, your, your large and small intestines your stomach your pancreas your spleen everything below that diaphragm is in that peritoneal cavity your spleen as well and when it gets inflamed due to that bacteria it's quick it, it's going to get inflamed mm -hmm. it's going to get puffy it's going to squeeze that Mm. So uh, if we, we have these, uh, this can lead to shock, <laughs> sepsis. Okay, just think about somebody just taking, acting as if your abdomen is a trunk, and get a, a pile of poo with bacteria and slapping it up in there. That bacteria is gonna eat away those vessels because that's what bacteria does when it, it has its freedom. Okay, um, gets to eating that stuff. Your vessel support turn holes in it, leaking out your content. This can lead to hypovolemic shock, septic shock. <laughs> so, you know, want to watch for these GI problems, okay? Uh, the procedure to help with this uh, disease, of course, you're going to have a colon resection. You're going to get rid of that, that inflamed area, especially if the treatment is, is not it's not working right or you came in later than what you're supposed to and you know we just need to hurry and get this out before you know current I mean shock comes in um, medication I mean sorry complications uh, peritonitis we just talked about that you're gonna have a rigid more like abdomen because all that if it's all that bacteria is in there it's not supposed to so it's inflamed it's gonna be a rigid Okay, board like that's the hallmark sign of peritonitis. Abdominal distension. Why? It's inflamed again. Nausea, vomiting. Of course, all that stuff is squeezing. It's gonna get rid of that stuff in that stomach. Rebound tenderness. Of course, it's gonna hurt. But or notice uh, your signs of your your symptoms of inflammation. You're gonna have pain, swelling, uh, fever, uh, tenderness. Oh, I'm sorry, not tenderness. Um, redness and uh edema says this woman okay um so what we're going to do if a patient is going through peritonitis we're going to place them in semi fowler's position to promote drainage you know uh monitor respiratory status you gotta understand that that cavity is under the diaphragm but if it's inflamed we can push up on those lungs want to watch that um, give oxygen you want to have them to cough and deep breathe and they might need mechanical ventilation okay uh, nasal gastric suctioning you want to get that whatever is in that bowel out okay uh, and you want a double lumen too for these um, suctions here keep nothing by mouth anytime we're having problems with our bowels we're going to keep it we want rest. Think of rest when we're having bowel problems, okay? We're not going to be eating like that. We're going to give antibiotics. That's the first thing right there. We don't want to go to septic shock here. Uh, monitor fluids and electrolytes. Our organ that deals with intaking those fluids that we drink, electrolytes, is impaired. So we want to watch for that because electrolytes being out of whack can be very detrimental, okay? Other complications, you can have uh, bleeding uh, due to the deterioration of the bowel. Uh, when it's inflamed to the point to where it, it just has to burst, you just got to know there's going to be bleeding along with the emptying of the uh, colon's content. Okay, you want to observe for rectal bleeding, that black tarry stool, bright red blood. Okay, check the vital signs. Um, you can probably catch a uh, shock early, you know, have that compensation little uh, phase, increased heart rate, increased blood pressure. We're trying to get stuff, you know, saved before we can't no more. Your, your, your organs, your body is going to go out trying, okay? Always. Unless something just really bad, bad. 
uh, your labs were checked your hematocrit which is going to be low hemoglobin is going to be low coagulation factor they might be low due to DIC depending on how severe your bleeding is or how many of those diverticulums have bursted you were just put in mind you know we, we're thinking about one but all of them can be inflamed and burst at the same time okay um, check fluids and electrolytes um, of course, we talked about that abscess and fistula formation due to that healing and non-healing. It can create these uh, these little tunnels, okay? That can, it can cause poo to go into your 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 vaginal area and cause UTIs. You know, it's like when you think of fistula, think of like little tunnels to little gateways to different part other parts of the body. That it shouldn't really it shouldn't be there. Okay, due to the destruction of the bowel wall leading to infection, okay, fistulas are tunnels created by severe injury caused by our own immune system because uh, with this inflammation, inflammation can tr it triggers your um, immune system and it can be overreactive and it can cause these tunnels to be made, okay? Toxic metacolon. Let's say this area of your colon has been injured too many times. It is tired and it's not working anymore. But let's say you don't know. I don't know how, but let's say you don't know. And it's just sitting there inside of your body, just soaking up all that water like a sponge. And then eventually it's going to burst. So this is a medical emergency here. Okay, due to inactivity of the colon, because at this point it's so it's hurts to the point to where it can't do anything. A massive colon dilation occurs due to it sucking up that water, and a client becomes at risk for perforation at this part. So uh, you got to understand some parts you got levels to the hurt. Okay, the the main part that's hurt is the part that bursted, and below that area, those areas are levels is reaching to that part there. Okay, there's levels to it. So some parts of the bowel might not be as severe as the other ones, but there's still some injury there. Okay. I hope this helped y'all. Um, here's a summary of diverticulitis. Uh, it's outpouching due to constipation. Uh, you're straining a lot. Um, let's say you're not getting enough fiber in your diet. Um, you're not drinking enough water. Okay. Um, when you go to the bathroom and you press, you push that, trying to get that hard pool out. Um, that pressure builds up and it causes an outpouching, a ballooning of your colon, and this can this can become infected uh, due to the fact that one you have bacteria that's now na naturally in the colon, and this area that's pouched out that, that bacteria can get inside of there and it's weak. It's 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 not how it's supposed to be. So that area is weak. So that bacteria can play with that area of that bowel and then let's say you're eating foods that's not supposed to you know that's contraindicated to when you're having this condition that food gets stuck in there gotta understand that it has wrapped around some bacteria as on its way down there and it probably got bacteria on its on its circumference <laughs> and it's stuck in there and that bacteria leap off and eat away at that area and cause inflammation Okay, uh, we don't want to uh, take any laxatives when we're trying to heal from diverticulitis. Um, stay away from seeds, nuts. Okay, you want your fiber. When you're in the process of healing from this disorder, you want a low fiber diet. We don't want you uh, diarrheaing. We don't want you straining anymore. We want you to rest. Then after inflammation is gone, your pain is gone. Then you're gonna uh, do moderate. Mo mo I'm sorry. Uh, re reorganize your diet. Okay, to include more fiber. Okay, because we don't want to be constipated every time we go to the bathroom. This is what causes this in the first place. Excuse me. Um. 
complications, peritonitis, toxic megacolon, fluid and electrolyte imbalances, bleeding of your bowels. Uh, you can bleed internally to death with here, depending on how severe it is. So if you know somebody who got these symptoms, let them know. Go ahead and go to the doctor, get their uh, antimicrobials, their antibiotics to treat this because it can lead to sepsis. If that, that pouch burst open, all its content is inside that peritoneal cavity. This can lead to severe shock, like shock for real. Your or multi organ failure, your, all those organs are being squished on. And so, uh, you know, someone who has diverticulitis, show them this video to educate, tell them to increase their fiber. I hope you learned something. Stay tuned for the questions to this um, lecture, the NCLEX questions. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it.